Okay guys, so I've been hunting in Oregon for 14 years, 13 years with a rifle, and this year was my first year doing archery. I am still trying to get my deer. I have gotten an elk, although earlier in September. So in this video, I just wanna share everything I know about, uh, uh, about hunting here in Oregon, everything I have learned about black-tailed deer, how elusive they are, how, uh, how they're able to survive uh, in the thick forest, you know, rainforest here in Oregon, uh, everything I have learned about Roosevelt elk, everything I have learned about black bear. So uh, the way I like to look at it is, uh, uh, I use an, an analogy of sports. So if we're gonna, uh, if we're gonna take these animals, we're gonna break it down into different sports. Uh, so uh, each animal has its own rules. Each animal uh, lives in such a way where you have to learn that specific animal to be able uh, to be able to you know uh, be successful every year. Uh, you can't uh, you can't uh, take one thing that you learn with uh, hunting deer and apply it to elk just because elk are are so different. They uh, they just play by different rules. So for example, if we have uh, Roosevelt elk, we have uh, black-tailed deer, we have uh, bear here in Oregon, and cougar, we're gonna break it down into the, uh, four different sports. Uh, and uh, the way I like to look at it is like basketball, volleyball, football, and soccer. So yes, you do have similarities, like each sport is played on, on the field. You know, each animal you hunt is in the forest. Uh, each sport uh, you play with a ball so each animal you hunt uh, is uh, with a weapon you know but uh, when it comes down to the actual game of volleyball when it comes down to the actual game of hunting a black-tailed deer then that's where the rules become different because uh, I don't know being being uh, being a hunter here in Oregon for 14 years you learn so much uh, I think I only skipped like one or two years where I didn't hunt, but you just learn so much. And this year, uh, I have been in the forest camping, scouting, and hunting more than probably in the last 10 years. That's how much time I took off from work, from family, or went with family. So I have learned, I have gained so much knowledge this year, It's uh, and I have made so many mistakes this year that uh, in a way it's cool and in a way it's like dang the more I'm out there uh, I feel like the more I know the the area the more I know the animal but also uh, the better they are at it because uh, I mean if you think about it if your life depended on survival let, let's just pretend that you're a mature black-tailed deer and your life depends on survival every single day of the year what would you do what would you do when, when if you're sitting on a, on a, on a, a side of a hill, you know, on a clear cut, and you hear a gunshot? What would you do if you're a black-tailed deer, and at this moment, you know, you realize that it's the first day of hunting. There's gonna be a hundred trucks driving through. What are you gonna do? What are, if you knew that they're hunting you? That's how smart the animals are. That's my opinion. The animals are really smart. That's why only. Only like roughly 10% of hunters are successful because 90% of hunters uh, don't 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 know the animal. They don't know the area. They don't know the habits of that that particular animal. Uh, they don't know their house, you know, because black-tailed deer they are uh, uh, they live most of their life in a couple of square miles. So uh, the way I like to look at it is they have their you know their food source. Uh, I like to call it, you know, their buffet or their restaurant, their kitchen. They have their backyard where they play, where they, uh, where they run around, uh, usually during during the night. Uh, that is close by to their food source. Uh, where their breeding takes place, usually that'll be like a, a flat area or like a, a bench uh, in the, in the side of the hill. Uh, and then they have their their house, their their living room or their bedroom. That is the area where they uh, where they sleep. That is that is probably going to be the uh, heavy timbered area where they 
uh, where they hang out during the day uh, and avoid predators, avoid hunters, people, hikers, avoid uh, cougars. Uh, that's that's their that's going to be their their living room. And uh, since that animal has been in the area for the last you know anywhere from one to ten years, they know that area. They know every single. Uh, bush they know every single uh, you know uh, patch of brush they know every little canyon every rock every they, they know their their home uh, it's like you knowing your own house you know if the lights are off you can navigate through the house if there's an intruder coming into your house you're gonna be able to uh, you're gonna be able to you know navigate around duck around the you know the table or the couch uh, to avoid that intruder because it's your house. That's how I feel about black-tailed deer. They have a house. They know their kitchen. They know their living room. They know their bedroom. And you don't. And you come into an area, first time there, you think I'm gonna get to that clear cut, you know, sit, and boom, there's gonna be five bucks in the area. No, like, they, they're already in their living room hanging out in the, in the heavy timber, you know? They're already up top, you know, a thousand feet up higher because they wanna look down to be able to see if something's approaching from below and they want to be able to have that wind coming from the back to be able to smell if something's approaching from the back that's how well they know the area so uh, the three rules that I uh, that I hunt by is uh, you got to learn the animal you got to learn the area and you have to be consistent you have to be consistent in what you do but you have to be consistent in the style of hunting that you do. If you glass, you gotta glass. You know, you gotta glass every day, all day, every single clear cut. Uh, and you have to be okay sitting for three hours in one spot to glass one clear cut, and moving to another one, which can be only a quarter mile away, and sitting there for another three hours glassing that clear cut. If you're, if you love still hunting, you have to be okay moving only you know a couple couple miles a day, not. Uh, my mistake that I used to make is I would hunt and I would hunt like 12 miles a day, you know, that's how much I would hike and then I realized that that tactic Worked for elk, but it does not work for deer unless I'm scouting if I'm scouting I'm gonna be I'm gonna be moving a lot, but if I'm actually hunting uh, If I'm uh, if I'm hunting and I get into fresh track, that's it like I'm gonna slow down You gotta be slow. You gotta you gotta look look farther because uh, because the animals, if they're bad at, you know, that's their main concern is to have a cougar approach them from below or from from up top, you know. That's why they have, if they can't see, if they can't look back, they will have the wind coming from the back. So, and uh, uh, deer, black-tailed deer primarily, they like to, they like to, you know, sit in a little canyon or on a little uh, bench on the side of the hill on the, on, on the clear cut because they like to look down and have the have the wind from their back that is why it's so important to move so slow when when they're sleeping when they're dozing that they won't be able to spot you and use your binoculars to uh to glass through the through the bushes through the branches under the trees because deer are small if they if they lay down you know all you can see is uh, probably their head and their ears sticking out uh, so uh, that's that's what i learned with black tailed deer you you have to you have to just be better than them that is why 90 percent of uh, hunters are not successful just because they're they they don't know the animal they don't know the area or they're not consistent you know one day they're walking 10 miles another day they are uh trying to glass uh, a clear cut and uh consistency is probably uh one of one of the keys to success in, in anything uh, because uh, uh, anything you do, if you stay consistent at it, uh, you can suck for the first three years, and then you you know your knowledge, your success starts compounding, uh, just like uh, in interest rate, you know, uh, in a bank in your savings account. The longer you hold it there, the the more it compounds. Same thing. There's only two things that that compound: uh, money and uh, and knowledge. So, uh, I mean. Uh, when you look at guys who harvest mature, mature bucks, mature bulls, you know, uh, most of those guys, they have been at it for like 10, 15, 20, 30 years. So they have, they have those years in their back pocket, you know, that's what they've been doing. Uh, and, uh, 
And uh, I'm not saying that a, a, a new guy, a new hunter can't be successful, most definitely, especially if you have those, uh, uh, if it's in your character to be patient, to be consistent, you know, to be diligent, to do your homework, to study, to look, to know the area, to, to learn the animal, most definitely you can be consistent. You, I mean, you can be successful. Uh, this is my first year archery hunting and it's my first year getting an elk and I truly believe it's because I was consistent. I scouted all my areas uh, before the hunting began, before the season opened. I, uh, and it's not like I went to an area once, no. I, I put in like 120 miles on foot before the season started and that's just scouting for elk. Not deer, not bear, just elk. Uh, so, been to four different units, drove around. I literally know every single road, every, uh, not every, every clear cut, but like, uh, that, that's how much time it takes uh, if, uh, if you wanna get an animal. Uh, again, I'm not saying you can't be successful in your first year, you most definitely can, uh, but imagine the amount of work that you do on the first year and you're successful, Imagine it's gonna double on your second year, triple on your third year, and it just compounds and compounds and compounds. That's why some hunters, they go, you know, all season and they see like 50 bucks and they decide not to shoot, uh, not to shoot a single one of them because uh, they're holding off for, for a bigger trophy just because of how much experience they have uh, uh, under their belt. So, uh, black tail deer, they, uh, there's different tactics you can use to take them uh, in Oregon. Uh, probably one of the most popular one, uh, and uh, what I have been doing before I switched to archery is, uh, you know, warehouser land. You you get a permit. You go glass clear cuts. You sit on a ridge. You drive around. Uh, you go you go through their bedding areas, uh, and uh, you try to get one that way. Uh, but I got bored of that. And also because uh, there's so many other hunters that are doing that, I decided to try something new. So I'm, I'm doing wilderness hunts, national forest hunts, where they don't log, where they stopped logging in like 2018, I think. Uh, so uh, if, you're, if you're rifle hunting, uh, I would highly recommend glassing uh, because you can see like 500 yards, 600 yards, and uh, uh, you're able to see an animal that way when they're moving, when they're feeding, or when they're moving from their feeding area into their bedding areas. Or uh, a lot of times uh, I would walk through clear cuts because uh, it doesn't take much for a deer to hide in plain sight because you know if there's bushes it can just lay under one bush and you don't know it's there and it's gonna sit there all day until evening and you're, you've been glassing this clear cut all day and then boom, in the evening, you know, five o'clock, 4.30, you, you see a buck get up right in the middle of a clear cut and he's been there all day and you just didn't know. That's how good they are. Uh, that's why that's why they're better than us. That's why they survive every year. That's why after hunting season, you know, in December, you go out there to the same clear cut, set up your spotting scope, grab your binoculars. You're gonna see mature bucks walking around because they're better than us. They're smarter. They're playing the survival game and we're not. Again, what would you do if you were a deer or if you were an elk and you had to avoid hunters, cougars, bears, hikers, you had to avoid all predators of all kind, uh, you know, 365 days per year, 24 seven, that's your game. That's, that's the game that they're playing. Uh, so uh, they're playing a survival game and we're playing a hobby. Uh, so that's why that's why the success rate is so uh, is so low for hunters because we don't look at it that way. We don't look at it as survival. You know, uh, uh, I'm a I'm a very competitive person when it comes to uh, just regular games or sports. So uh, also when it comes to work or like building a business, I'm a very competitive person. You know, and when it comes to uh, trying to figure something out or even trying to find an animal. Uh, I get uh, I get frustrated and mad at myself because how is that deer better than me? You know, how is that deer smarter than me? Or uh, how is that you know 16 year old guy on on YouTube constantly harvesting deer? 
like how is he so good uh, and uh, probably probably because he spends more time out there he does his homework he uh, he puts it in the legwork you know he goes to places people are not willing to go he he climbs into canyons people are not willing to climb into he spends uh, much more time glassing and studying the animal you know he knows his area he knows his animals and he's consistent that's that's what that's the difference between uh, between somebody who's constantly successful in their hunting and somebody who's not that's just my opinion uh, that's what I have learned here in Oregon and uh, going back to different tactics for different animals you gotta you gotta know if you're deer hunting you gotta be deer hunting you gotta think like a deer you gotta think like a buck you gotta you gotta think what is a buck gonna do where is a buck gonna hide where is a buck gonna uh, gonna eat today you know and a lot of times the does can be uh, just running through the whole clear cut and the buck is gonna feed just on the edge he doesn't want to go in at least not when it's uh, uh, completely dark because he understands he understands that he's playing a survival game he was able to become a four pointer he was able to become a wide rack he was able to uh, to become a mature buck because he has been at it for nine years you know that's what he's been doing uh, animals are smart don't think animals are stupid yes they make mistakes and that's when we harvest them but uh, but they are not dumb so uh, three things I go by again is learn the animal learn the area and be consistent and you will be successful uh, so uh, another thing is that when you're elk hunting you got to be thinking like an elk you know what does an elk want if there's uh, uh, if there's uh, 10 animals in a herd each animal needs roughly 30 to 40 pounds of food per day where are they gonna get it you know that's why that's why elk move so much that's their herd animal you know uh, they uh, they can go five ten miles a day easy because they're going from one plot of uh, of uh, food food source to another one uh, because if they stay around in one area they, they won't have enough food for everybody uh, I mean think about it how I mean 40 pounds of food is a lot 40 pounds of food 10 elk 400 pounds of 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 grass and leaves and twigs and whatever else they eat that's a lot of food that's why elk move so much so when you're elk hunting you got to move fast until you hit fresh tracks then you can slow down because that means the animals are are close by but if you're not seeing tracks man you you better be moving fast uh, because elk are heavy and when they move they leave a lot of tracks they leave a lot of prints uh, so if you're seeing all of these old prints and nothing new then most likely the animals you know they could be half a mile away they could be they could be five miles away they could be 15 miles away and uh, there's uh, I think there's still a lot of animals in Oregon uh, I mean the numbers are definitely down because the numbers of hunters are up and the numbers of predators the uh, cougars are higher but there's still animals out there and each year uh, animals still survive you know those mature bulls they survive because uh, they're playing a survival game and we're not they're 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 avoiding cougars they're uh, they're avoiding bears they're avoiding hunters and how do they do it you gotta think like an animal to be able to get an animal you gotta know the area like an animal to to be able to get an animal and you have to be consistent in what you do or in what the animal does to uh, to be able to get an animal so uh, if, uh, if you're trying to find elk you have to move a lot uh, like, again, like I said, I, I went like 120 miles on foot before the season started trying to locate elk and uh, I saw four bulls this year, three or four, I don't remember, and uh, and I got, I got the last one, a six by six, and I truly believe it's because I was consistent. I took days off, I went out there uh, and uh, I put in the leg work, I put in the homework hundreds of hours of uh, videos on YouTube of guys talking about and teaching about uh, elk calling you know calling techniques calling secrets like hundreds of hours probably I've listened on YouTube and watched videos 
elk nut, you know, Palmadel, uh, uh, his videos are great. His app is awesome. I literally, I, I got my elk using his tactic, uh, the slow play uh, elk hunting. That's what the tactic is called, slow play on his app, Palmadel's app. Uh, I think it's called elk nut. So get that one, you know, get black tail deer apps and uh, be consistent, be consistent. You gotta learn the animal, you gotta learn the, the area because, because uh, again, it's their house. You know, that herd of elk, they're running around making a 10, 10 mile loop every week, you know, and uh, you just gotta, you just gotta find them. Yeah, maybe, maybe they don't go through the same canyon every single time they make a loop, but maybe they cross the same ridge, maybe they take the same ridge uh, every time they make that loop. And you gotta find that ridge, put up some trail cameras, check out what you got, check out the area, and, uh, uh, and be consistent. Uh, bear hunting in Oregon, uh, also, uh, if uh, you, gotta, you gotta choose your tactic, you're either gonna, you know, you're either gonna spot and stalk it, or you're gonna call it, or or you're gonna still hunt the area. If you're 100% sure there's a bear in that canyon, you can still hunt it. Uh, follow follow the path, follow where you think he's gonna be going, because you know bears, all they think about is food, uh, and uh, and they can be constantly found where there's food. So. Uh, but if you're gonna be calling, again, you gotta find find an area that, that holds some bears and be consistent in calling, you know? Uh, run that call for, for an hour, then uh, move half a mile lower into the canyon, run it for another hour, then move half a mile lower into the canyon, run it for another hour. And imagine if you're just consistently doing that, it takes you uh, an hour to run the call and half an hour to move. And you do it, you know, from, from seven in the morning until seven in the evening, 12 hours. You can snack, you can drink your tea, have your coffee uh, in between. But imagine how much ground you're gonna cover and at least you will be 100% sure that you, you went five miles and uh, uh, if you're 100% sure there's a bear there, he will hear you and uh, he will come out. Same with cougars. Uh, you can uh, you can drive around, you know, fresh snow, find tracks where they cross ridges or go down into the canyon or up into the canyon, then you can loop around to see if he already crossed that road. If he did, you can loop around lower to see if he already crossed the next road. And uh, one time I was uh, cougar hunting and uh, I saw the tracks up on the ridge. I looped, ar looped around six miles below and he already crossed that road. Uh, so the cougars, they can they can move a lot. They can move 10 miles, 12, out, 12 miles in a single day. And an interesting thing is that there was a lot of deer uh, in that area and he didn't seem to want them. He didn't seem to track them because uh, there was snow and I could see that the deer are walking around and he didn't care. He was just going straight down the canyon. And uh, I think it's uh, because cats are so territorial, you know, he's walking, walking his boundary, walking around and uh, probably has, uh, probably probably just moving from one one canyon to another canyon or from top top of the ridge down below into the canyon just because he wants to hunt down there he doesn't care about deer up here you know it's just time for him to move so he's gonna move um, so again my I like the analogy of sports each sport has different rules and each animal lives by different rules yes there's there's still a lot of things they have in common or a lot of rules they have in common, like uh, wind, for example. If uh, if you're moving slowly and a deer sees that something moved, they see your movement, uh, they will stop, they will freeze, and they'll try to look at you. They'll try to figure figure out what is that, who is that, is that a cougar, or is that an elk, or is that just another deer that moved into uh, wants to hang out with us, or is that a tree moving, you know, or is there a bird in that bush? Uh, so uh, they're not gonna run away right away. Uh, same with elk, uh, same with most animals. 
when they see something move, they want to know what it is before they run. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to the smell, if it smells you, that's it, game over. It knows it's a human being. The deer knows you're a human being. The deer knows you're a hunter. If it smells you, he has to have that uh, distance that he feels safe at, so he can move. He can run, you know, 200 yards and and stop. And if you're rifle hunting, you can you can shoot him when he stops. A lot of times, uh, mule deer when they're going over a ridge, if you spook him, he's gonna be going uh, up uphill. And right before crossing the ridge, he's gonna stop and have one last look. That's when that that gives you a chance to you know drop your backpack, uh, uh, put your rifle down, or throw your bipod on, uh, whatever however you hunt. And uh, because he's gonna stop. Uh, right before he crosses that ridge, uh, you can shoot him uh, with uh, with a blacktail deer. If he's on a clear cut, he's gonna run and stop right before going into the timber. He might stop for two seconds, three seconds to have one last look to see, hey, like uh, uh, what scared me, you know. So that's what I learned uh, hunting here in Oregon: deer hunting, elk hunting, bear hunting. Uh, that's uh, that's my experience. Uh, I mean, 14 years of hunting, and every every year just gets better and better. Uh, so uh, uh, you gotta you gotta remember when you're hunting that if the animal smells you, you're done. So when you're hunting, you just have the wind in your nose because at least you know if you're moving that way. Uh, uh, with elk, a lot of times I smell elk before they smell me. Like three times, uh, I was an elk this year. Every time, because I was hunting with wind in my face, every time I smelled them before I saw them. And literally, I would be still hunting, you know, and uh, I smell something, and and they smell like cows mixed with horses. So, uh, I smell something and I'm like, and I stop, and I'm like, <laughs> and then like 100 yards later, I see an elk literally or like a herd of elk literally it was like that that's why it's so important now imagine if you're coming from the other side and you're hunting downwind you're going that way and the wind is going down that, that way and imagine how the elk are gonna respond when they're like or the deer when they're like oh that's definitely a human being we got to get out of here and they're not gonna run it'll just you know uh, slowly crawl through the bushes walk down 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 a couple cliffs or or down canyon and that's it because it's easier to move down so it's gonna go down instead of making noise and move up uh, most of the times the animals when they're spooked they're gonna either go straight up a canyon or go down a canyon uh, so uh, with blacktail deer uh, uh, many many times they will run down down the canyon that's just what I learned they will bed at top of the canyon and if you're gonna spook them they're gonna run down canyon uh, so imagine imagine uh, they they rely on their on their smell their nose is literally their their uh, they trust their nose so much it's never wrong never on eye, eyesight or hearing it can it, you know they can uh, it can uh, it can lead you down because if uh, uh, if if they see something move they're like not sure what it is they want to know what it is if they hear something uh, snap a branch they want to know what it is you know is it a bear or or is that an elk coming through a herd of elk coming through but if they smell a bear they're out of there if they smell a cougar they're out of there if they smell if they smell a human being you know and they're 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 gone they're out of there and with black tailed deer when they smell a human being they know they don't have to run because they have so much cover around them everything is thick bushes you know blackberry bushes Many, many times I would still hunt through an area, including this year, I was still hunting through an area, walking very quietly, very slowly, looking around, and I'm just hunting and I'm thinking, dang, like it's so thick here, I'm 100% sure there's deer in the area. So I hunt through and then on the way out, I'm just walking a little fast, uh, making noise, sure enough, Right before I come out of the forest, I look back and I see a buck standing right there. I missed him though, he was like 65 yards, but I missed him, my arrow went right over him. 
so uh, they don't have to uh, deer they know they have so much cover around them they can just go behind a bush and that's it you know they're, they're, they're not gonna run like elk will uh, because elk they need a lot of space to 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 hide they're gonna they need to put that distance between you and them so uh, so they're gonna run but deer most of the time they will run for like 50 yards 100 yards and then they're gonna duck down under bushes you know or into them into some thick timber and uh, and they're safe uh, so uh, that's what you gotta that's what you gotta remember when you're hunting is that they're playing a survival game and we're playing a hobby most of the time or we're trying to get meat or you know we're not playing a survival game but if we were playing a survival game we would be just as good as deer in the forest like imagine if you're if you're if if, uh, if something's hunting you imagine if something's hunting you like 24 7 you gotta be aware that that cougar they can attack you any moment like how are you gonna how are you gonna uh, how are you gonna move through the forest if, uh, like knowing that that cougar it can attack you you know how are you gonna go to to eat uh, knowing that uh, a bear might come and attack you from behind like you would be aware your your self-awareness is gonna be so so incredibly good that's how deer are you know it's gonna uh, take a bite of grass and then like lift his head up right away uh, because because it knows if it's gonna stay down low with it, with its head down like something can approach it that's why uh, a lot of times they would even try to trick you uh, by pretending that they're putting their head down and without grabbing uh, a bite they would like lift their head up really fast trying to catch a movement I've literally seen it happen many times when a deer uh, uh, when a deer is suspicious that something's in the area and I'm watching it and it'll pretend that it's trying to eat and then lift his head up right away like very quickly and like look straight at me to, to see if I will make a movement uh, and uh, they're really they're really they're really smart they're playing a survival game and so uh, for us to be able to uh, to play their game we gotta play by their rules we gotta uh, we gotta hunt by their rules. We gotta, uh, like, again, the three things that I, I, the, th the three things that I teach, the th three things that I tell everybody is you have to learn the animal that you're hunting, you have to learn the area that you're hunting, because learning, learning the animal, you understand its behavior. Learning the area, you understand its uh it's house it's kitchen you know where they eat it's living room where they hang out it's uh uh it's a uh, uh, bedding area it's uh you know the the cover that they that they uh that they take you gotta know those things because if you know those things you can move from uh from their feeding area after they're done you can move into their bedding area because you know where it is you don't have to walk around you know spook them uh, or bump into them uh, because if you know the area your your odds of success go just way up and the last one is you have to stay consistent stay consistent in how you hunt if you're still hunting still hunt if you're glassing glass you know don't don't uh, don't uh, uh, spend time driving around during daytime because uh, because uh, most uh, like if you know where they're bedded you wouldn't be driving around you know you're gonna be going and hunting their their bedding areas so uh, again the three things is learn the animal everything you can about if you're deer hunting learn deer hunting uh, if you want to call in bucks learn rattling you know learn how to use uh, how to use uh, the deer calls you know learn uh, learn where to call learn when to call learn what part of the month to call uh, because not always you know bucks don't care about those 24 7 they, they only care about those when they're running uh, they will use those to their advantage to see if uh, if uh, you know they might feed behind those and if those are moving into a clear cut buck will hang out and like see if it's safe for him to move in and when it's safe for him to move in he's gonna move in but if he's gonna see those those spooked out of the clear cut you know and they're just like uh, you know tails high running through the clear cut into the timber he's not gonna go there because he knows that 
they something spooked them and also deer observe other deer like if you can see that one doe is watching the other doe or like one deer is looking in a different direction that means there's something there that means maybe maybe there's a buck that's approaching or maybe there's a buck that's feeding or maybe there's another hunter that's walking this way I've had that happen to me uh, uh, here uh, that's another reason why I switched from rifle to archery is because I was tired of of uh, hunting with so many people during rifle season so I decided to archery hunt this year but uh, and I love it by the way watch my other video about archery hunting in Oregon uh, but uh, to be successful like again like consistency you know spend days uh, uh, take a couple days off and go camping in an area you want to hunt you know in the summer at least you'll know the area even if you don't see deer if you don't see animals if you don't uh, if you don't uh, find an animal during your scouting trip at least you'll know the area and so many times uh, I would go to scout an area and I'm like yeah this looks way different than I thought it's gonna look or this is way too dry for animals to be here or this uh, this this timber that I that I can see on Google Maps it was all logged so I'm like don't be disappointed on your you know opening day when you when you're going out to the spot that you picked to hunt and there's 10 trucks parked there because you didn't scout that place you know or when you're going into a spot that that you that you wanted to hunt that you saw on Google Maps and all that area is logged you know that's why scouting most of the work most of the work of hunting is done the preparation is done before the hunt begins it's like preparing for a test you know at school you have to prepare before the test begins you can't you can't learn after test starts you have to you have to do the learning beforehand that's same with hunting you have to learn before you hunt because hunting is a test who's better you or the animal who uh, who's gonna win you or the animal you know so uh, that's uh, that's another thing you got to think about scouting is a lot of times uh, you know you can go for a day you can do a day trip in the summer to to learn the area, to learn the trailheads, or to learn the access of, uh, of, of an area you want to hunt, and uh, I like to I like to find like hidden access. I call it is where maybe there's a creek that's between me and uh, and where I want to go hunting, like where the road is and where I want to go hunting. If there's a creek, you know, I would try to cross that creek and go straight there instead of. Uh, going around and parking at the gate where all the guys are parked you know because everybody knows there's a gate over there so everybody's gonna be over there the animals are gonna be pushed down and I'm gonna park on the side of the road you know uh, cross the creek that's knee-deep you know, or, or waist deep and go straight in there uh, and hunt from the from below because the hunters are gonna be pushing the animals from the top like you got to think about those uh, those areas because uh, so many times so many times I was disappointed just coming to an area that I didn't scout coming to an area thinking it's gonna be this and it's not or thinking that I'm gonna be the only one and there's five trucks you know and everyone's already there uh, hunting with their guns or I hear gunshots you know and and it's like you gotta find another area to go hunt it's uh, like don't don't do that do your scouting before before the season starts and you will have a very enjoyable hunt another thing I want to talk about is uh, gear here in Oregon Washington it rains so much it rains a lot and even when it doesn't rain everything's wet all the bushes are wet the trees are wet the you know you you can't walk without getting wet so have quality gear I bought Sitka gear this year I regret it's been my dream to buy Sitka gear and I regret not buying not spending that money not investing that money 10 years ago quality boots you know I use Danner boots I, I, uh, I haven't tried a lot of boots but uh, I have tried a lot of cheap boots and uh, I decided to go with Danner's because they're uh, just really 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 good I consider them really good uh, so they have different kind of boots insulated they have heavy insulation medium insulation so you can choose just go to their store here in Portland 
on Marine Drive or an airport drive, I don't remember. Danner Boot Factory. Uh, anyway, so having quality gear, uh, I use wool underlayment to stay war warm. I use uh, uh, I use a wool sweater to stay warm over my Sitka jacket, over my uh, Sitka rain jacket. Uh, so, and also that big rain jacket that also covers my binoculars so they don't get wet. Just having quality gear, you're gonna have a quality trip. I'm not saying that if you can't, if you can't afford, and if you have, you know, if you're living on a budget, I'm not saying you're not gonna have fun out there. Definitely, I've had fun for, you know, 13 years until I bought Sitka gear. But I just understand how much, uh, how much more I was able to enjoy this year uh, because I have the quality gear. I invested, uh, I invested some money with my wife's permission, of course. Uh, she actually bought all of that gear for me. Uh, and uh, you're just like it's not a problem for me to go to go hunting if it's pouring snow I mean pouring rain or if it's if it's snowing or if it's just wet outside because I have the gear uh, it's December right now I'm going for my archery deer hunt uh, same area I was yesterday at because I cannot figure those deer out I know they're there uh, I think it snowed up there today and I know that two three days later there's gonna be tracks all over the place and I still don't know where the where those deer where they bed I still don't know where they feed and I've been I've been all over the area I've been there ten times this year and I can't seem to find where their beloved you know bedding areas and uh, like I know if I'm gonna wait three days after the snow I'm gonna go out there there's gonna be tracks all over the place that's why I'm going right now because it just snowed yesterday so I wanted to be able to at least see their fresh tracks see whether where, where they're going and uh, try to figure them out because there's rubs all over the place there's deer all over the place but I still don't know where they're at I still don't know where uh, where they live where they move to so again the three main things learn the animal learn the area and stay consistent.